Good morning, everybody. Welcome to session four of our OMS expedition series. Today's topic is performing fundamental server monitoring using log analytics. Uh, I'll be your host today, Gabriel Taylor. I'm a senior, uh, I know my own title, solutions architect at Model Technology Solutions. Uh, emails on the board. So you, oops, hit a button. I'm on top of things this morning. So you may have uh, seen, may have been here for our first session. We did an in-person session a few weeks ago. We've also put two sessions up online since then. Actually, if you're here watching this live this morning, there's only one other session online. Our third session got delayed, but it's going to be online tomorrow. And this session will go online next week. We are recording this, so feel free to have questions and whatnot. There's going to be a dedicated question and answer time at the end. If you have any questions along the way, that's just fine too. So. Here's a rough agenda of what we're looking at today. We're going to start off just by describing what our series is about again, then diving into what is, what are we talking about when we say fundamental server monitoring, and how do we accomplish this with log analytics, and also what's better about this versus what are your on-prem solutions today. We'll have several demos mixed in throughout that, showing off what we do with log analytics, how to configure everything, how to use everything, and we'll go from there. So a quick overview of our series. It's an ongoing series of presentations, webinars, and recordings that are focused on knowledge transfer about OMS, about the Operations Management Suite, which is a collection of tools from Microsoft designed for modern data center management using cloud services. Um, our scenarios are a combination of high-level overviews and deep dives talking about civic scenarios, how to accomplish civic scenarios with the tools. And one of our main goals is to show how these tools though they are cloud tools, will relate and benefit you in your on-prem environments today. The reason behind that, we talk to a lot of customers who think, uh, you hear about the Azure services, hear about Operations Management Suite, and they think, okay, well, I'm fully on-prem. I don't have an Azure footprint. What does this matter to me? I've got SCOM. I've got SolarWinds. Why do I care about any of the things in here? And the reality is there's a lot of benefits that these tools can bring to you, bring to your existing environment without you having to make any drastic changes. And so what we want to do through this series is show how this can be used with your current environment to show the benefits that you can get and how quick it is to spin this up and leverage those capabilities. So I already mentioned what we're doing in this session four, defining what fundamental server monitoring is, what we're talking about with that, how to configure that, how to perform that in log analytics, what the experience is like, and where we can go from there. So I already kind of gave an overview of what the operations management suite is. It's a little bit deeper. It's a collection of tools that are all Azure cloud services that relate out and connect out to wherever your environment is, whether your environment is on-prem, whether you're hybrid between on-prem and Azure or Amazon or some third party uh, cloud vendor. These are tools that can be used to interact with and integrate with your existing environment. The whole suite falls into four main pillars, four main categories, which are insight and analytics, security and compliance, production recovery, and automation and control. These map to certain tools. Uh, insight and analytics is mainly served by the log analytics tool, same as security and compliance. Protection recovery comprises the Azure backup and Azure site recovery solutions, and automation and controls combination of Azure Automation and Azure Automation DSC. Uh, additionally, just earlier this week, uh, actually I think it was last Friday, uh, Microsoft had a blog post announcing that their application insights service via Azure is also being added to the operations management suite. So the official OMS page hasn't been updated yet, but the application insights tools will also be part of OMS going forward. And if you're not familiar with those, they're basically a set of tools for getting deep information out of websites and web applications about their performance. So with what we're talking about today, with our fundamental service server monitoring, we're going to be really diving into log analytics being the cloud-based monitoring tool. So when we talk about fundamental monitoring, what we really mean by that is the basic elements of monitoring that are consistent across all your devices, regardless of what uh, application is on there, what role those are. I've been working with Operations Manager, other monitoring tools for a number of years, and I can tell you that no matter which client I've gone to, no matter what they're doing on the servers that they're wanting to monitor, everybody wants to know what their resource utilization is. Everybody wants to know what uh, the server up or down. 
wants to know about the state of key window services, and wants to be able to look at the event log to see if there's any errors, I'm notified about that. So really that's what we're talking about here is those four areas of fundamental server monitoring that's gonna be there regardless of whatever else is happening in the server. And this establishes the baseline too, because once we have these categories monitored, we can build on that and monitor anything else we're looking to get. So with Log Analytics, at its core, it is a log analytic platform. It's, it's log collection. You've got numerous data sources that you can plug in to Log Analytics. And it'll scoop up all that data, normalize it, and present it out for you to search through. Um, one of the benefits of Log Analytics the approach of log analytics, be it OMS log analytics or Splunk or something like that, versus some of your classic monitoring tools, is that the data is not as structured as it is in older tools. Unlike SCAM, where you have a strict data model and you have to understand that data model to really find the data you're looking for, with log analytics, all the data is essentially just a record containing a set of keyword value pairs. And so because of that, we can easily search through all the data we have easily filter on it and not have to worry about, well, we have to make sure we're targeting this class or that class. It's all data, it's all there for us to go through. So the main thing that we wanna look at with Log Analytics first is what data we need to collect in order to get information about that fundamental server monitoring. With Log Analytics, that's broken up into a couple different pieces. For availability monitoring, for up-down monitoring, there's a solution for Log Analytics called the Agent Health Solution that it's pretty straightforward. It just discovers information about the servers you're monitoring, about the agent that's on them, and heartbeats between those agents to the Log Analytics platform. So through those heartbeats, we can tell whether or not a server is online, or at least whether or not the monitor is online, giving us up-down information at a base level. Additionally, beyond that, for resource utilization, service health, and event log errors, all of that comes down to either performance data being collected or event log data be, being collected. We can, all the service health data and obviously the event log data can all be gleaned from the state of the event log and the data we can pull out of there. So we need to enable data uh, event log collection as well as performance collection. With Log Analytics, we're able to easily configure both of those without worrying about complex wizards or anything. Up on the screen right now, you can see an image of what some of the uh, data source configuration looks like in Log Analytics where we enable the collection of the, of the event logs, collection of our performance counters. With OMS, we're able to just plug in an event log name, be it application, security, your operations manager logs, your application logs, whatever other logs you have on there that you want to collect, we can plug in the name. It'll actually autofill and give suggestions from common log names. Select whether we want to get critical error information or error warning information alerts and it'll start scooping up that data from all of our servers that we have talking to our Log Analytics workspace. Additionally, for performance counters, if you looked at our previous video online, session two, the whole thing is a deep dive into enabling performance monitoring and working with performance monitoring Log Analytics. So we're gonna talk about that some here too, but for a really deep look, I do encourage you to look at our last video as well. But we just go in data sources and type in the performance counter we're looking for, type in both the object the instance name or an asterisk, we want all instances, and the counter name, and it'll start collecting that information. So this is a picture of the agent health solution, which when we turn that on again, it's gonna cause heartbeating to start happening from the agents to OMS, so we can collect that heartbeat information, <clears throat> pardon me, and report off of that, view that to collect our, to monitor availability. This is all the intro fun stuff here. As far as data collection frequency goes, and this is a question that I've had asked of me several times when talking to you all about log analytics, because they worry that between the time the data, the data actually happens on the server to when it's sent up to the cloud service to when that finishes processing it to when they can actually sort it might take a while. And the reality is it doesn't take very long at all. Most of the data that is generated on those servers is captured by the agent and sent up to, oper to operations management suite right away. All of your event log data, all of your performance, all your event log data, as soon as those events hit the event log, Log Analytics agent will grab that and shoot it up to Operations Management Suite. With performance, with performance data, on any given counter, you have the ability to specify what the collection frequency should be. 
So if you want that performance data to be collected once every 10 seconds or once every 10 minutes or once every 30 seconds, you can set values anywhere from uh, 10 seconds to 24 hours, I believe. So anywhere in there that you want to be collected, you have control over that data collection frequency. And as far as the heartbeats, those are sent by default every one minute. So we're able to see if the server has been down for over a minute. Um, additionally, as far as the amount of time it takes OMS to process that data before it gets available for you to search, it's actually a very short amount of time. I will, when we get into the demo, I will show you where that metric can be measured, but it actually, on the usage dashboard, it'll show you exactly how long it takes OMS to process that data upon bring it in. And depending on how much data is coming at any time, there is a variance, but it's usually somewhere between one second and 25 seconds. It's pretty quick between when that uh, information actually happens and when it's available for you for searching, when it's available for alerts to fire off and let you know that th something is wrong. So we're going to dive in real quick, just look at where we enable that and what those settings are. I'm going to hop over here to my Log Analytics dashboard. And for anybody who hasn't seen this yet, this is the main page of Log Analytics. The way it's broken down is we've got tiles for each of the solutions we've added, each of the custom views we've created. And we'll talk more about custom views later in this presentation. Um, these give us quick access to some high-level information for the given areas. And then we can drill into those, clicking on them to look at more data. For us right now, talking about enabling the data collection we need, we want to go into the settings and into the data sources section. So under data, we can define in here a number of different types of data to be collected. For what we care about right now for this presentation, we're going to talk mainly about the event logs, performance counters. Note that we can do both Windows and Linux. Log analytics is uh, heterogeneous. Doesn't matter if you have Windows servers, Linux servers, anything else. There's an agent for both. All the functionality, almost all the functionality works in both places. Um, so with event logs, like I've said before, we can come in here, just type in a log name. As we start typing in, it's going to give us suggestions from common names. I can, hopefully that's large enough for you to see. If not, I can zoom in. But we can just select which one we want to collect. And then once we add that, just select whether we want error, warning, information by check, checking them, checking them. And as soon as you save that, any direct agents that are reporting to SCOM, that new configuration will be sent to them right away. Or sorry, reporting to Operation Management Suite, to Log Analytics. If you're using SCOM as the middleman between your Log Analytics agents and Log Analytics, then there is an up to five minute delay between the new configuration getting to those servers after you make it. Um, just as time for that configuration to be distributed to the SCOM management group and then from there out to the agents. But very straightforward to add the, the event log collection. Performance counters, just the same. You can see that in my environment here, I've got a number of them added already. We can come in here and just type in another. Let's say I wanted to add something from SQL. I can just type in SQL and it'll give me a list of all the available counters. I can just choose one. Click add to add it. And this is also where we can change the interval on a per counter basis. One thing to note at this point in time, you're not able to say collect th these logs, collect these counters only from specific servers. At this point in time, it is uh, global enablement. We turn on the collection for all of our servers, just the settings for all of our servers. So if you have different requirements for different servers, your best bet at this point is to find the lowest requirement, set that globally, just to make sure you're getting all the data you need. Once we've enabled that, the other thing to add would be the agent health solution, which here's where you can actually see which solutions that I've got installed already. But if you want to add a new solution, not save those changes, we can go to the log analytics uh, store, as it were, my website follows. Suddenly everything's hanging, so forgive that. Got a little bit of demo freezes in the middle of things. I'm on shared Wi-Fi right now, so that's, that's my excuse. So we go to the solutions gallery. This is a place where we can find all of the official Microsoft solutions. In time, they'll be able to have 
partner solutions and whatnot in here as well. At this point, everything in here is a solution that's provided by Microsoft as part of Blog Analytics. And the Agent Health solution, I've already got it added, so it's over here right now. But you just come in here, select the solution, and click Add. That would add the logic into your workspace, distribute the configuration to your agents, and have them start heart beating. So once that's added, we can go into the solution, take a look at it. I'm hopping into the usage area here. For those who don't know, this usage dashboard is a great way to see how much data is actually being collected by Logging Links, all of the metrics surrounding that data collection. And if we scroll over to the far right, there's this performance section that denotes time taken to collect and index data, showing both the, the average uh, 90th percentile and maximum. And we're going to see in my environment here, the average amount of time it takes between when data comes into the service and when we're able to use it is five seconds. The max is 24 seconds, the 90th percentile 10.8. So it's pretty fast between when something happens and when we're able to actually use that in log analytics. So looking at the agent health dashboard in here, on the tile, we can see a quick look at how many agents are already talking to SCAM or to OMS. I'm on, on fire this morning, as well as how many are currently unresponsive, how many are currently down. In my environment right now, everything appears to be up and running, so that shows zero, life is good. We'll drill into more information there in a little bit. I want to first talk about the next step being the actual visualization of that data. So obviously the first step to monitoring our servers is collecting the data we need to know when something is wrong. Second step is knowing how to see that data, how to visualize it so we know if we actually find out when something is wrong. So uh, I've got notes. If the audience watched our previous session on analyzing performance data with Log Analytics, you already have an idea about how to use log search to explore data and to find information within the log system. We're going to move beyond that some and talk more about dashboards in here, talking about how we can take those log search queries, how we can take that data that we've found, put it together into a dashboard of our own, and easily visualize that data so we can view that health. So in log analytics, we have custom dashboards. This is nothing new. Every monitoring tool has dashboards of some kind. Um, for those of you out there who are familiar with me, you know that I've been working with SCAM for a long time. That's a constant reference point. It's a really great analog to use when talking about log analytics. So I'm going to talk about that briefly and talk about some of the comparisons between dashboards in SCAM and dashboards in log analytics. Um, with SCAM, we do have capability of building custom views and building custom dashboards. And SCAM has been doing a pretty good job increasing the capabilities of those dashboard creations over the years, though the fact remains that the SCAM console was not originally designed for the sort of dashboards people expect these days. And so the effective dashboards we can do in SCAM, they're not always as flexible or as easy to put together as people would like. Um, a frequent request that I've gotten with SCOM projects has to build top-end style dashboards if you put on a big TV in a room so you can quickly easily see what the overall state of something is. And that's doable in SCOM. I'm not shooting that down. But it does take a little bit of work and there are some caveats to it. Log and Linux, on the other hand, gives us a much more flexible way of building those dashboards, presenting them however we want, and being able to throw them up on a screen, throw them up in, uh, on a website, however we need to access it. Because everything in Log Analytics is just a query under the hood, it makes it a lot easier to find the data we're looking for and present that data without having to worry about or fight with the elements of SCAM that make that less flexible, that make that hard to put together. So I actually... For this session, when I first started playing this session, I built out a pretty good custom dashboard for Windows Server Monitoring to demonstrate how we can do this and visualize it. One of the benefits with the custom dashboards in Log Analytics as well is that they're very easy to import and export. You can easily distribute it to whomever you want. And again, because everything is a query, you don't have to worry about whether or not there are management pack prerequisites or whether or not something is needs to be in the configuration already in order for those dashboards to work. 
so long as the data is being collected, you grab a dashboard off of the internet, plug it into your login Linux environment, it's going to work. You're going to see the information right away. If data is not being collected, you'll just it'll still work. You'll just see that there's no data being returned. So it's very much easier to put these together. But the reason I mention this is because about two weeks ago, uh, another company actually published a Windows Server OS monitoring solution out to the Azure Marketplace, which is really comprised of a custom view as well as some other bits that essentially is what I had built for you guys, only stepped up several notches. So I'm going to walk through that and use that as an example both of how we can enable custom monitoring and how we can visualize it, but also how we can customize those solutions, how we customize our own solutions and those of others. So to set the stage for this solution we're going to be talking about, the Windows Server OS solution is essentially a composite solution that makes up of some a script that does, does the deployment, which automatically enables some data collection, a custom view that's imported into your login and its workspace, as well as a collection of saved searches so you can quickly analyze some of that data being picked up from your servers. It's really no different from what you do manually if you were to go in, enable data collection like we just looked at, build a custom view, save some searches, and go from there. The only upside is that it's already put together and somebody else has done the work for you, making it a lot easier to deploy this and get it up and running. Um, I do want to mention one caveat. Uh, if you were to go out to the Azure Marketplace right now and go to deploy it to an existing workspace, there is documentation for the solution that advises you to uh, disable the collection of the things that this solution enables before enabling the solution, because it will then, if it tries to enable what's already enabled, it'll spit out some errors and you'll go, oh no, something happened, what's wrong? The reality is, I already tested this a couple times in a few workspaces of mine. You can deploy this on top of the existing workspace without any problems. It will generate errors if something that it's trying to enable is already enabled, but it does not stop the solution from being deployed. So, so long as you know, okay, those errors say that it had a problem enabling the collection of performance counter one, two, three, that's fine. I already had that enabled. Life is good. So this breaks down information for us into those fundamental categories very straightforwardly. It actually, in this one dashboard, pulls together that availability monitoring information. So we don't have to look at the agent health solution to see it. We just have that enabled still, because that's where the heartbeat information is coming from. But we're able to visualize that agent health data right alongside our other server health data. It's got quick. Uh, it's got several blades in there that show the top end resource utilization for your servers in your environment, focusing on CPU utilization, memory, disk, network, the whole shebang. Um, it also has sections that list whether there are any critical Windows services stopped on any of your machines. Um, it also has sections for key Windows health errors, things that would pop up at the event log, so you can quickly find whether those key issues are down. Additionally, with all the saved searches in there, you can quickly find the other information that may be relevant to you for your environment. And because this is essentially a custom solution, we're able to customize that view that they provide to do anything else we want. So if we look at it and we decide this is great, but it would be even greater if, say, the spots that it's calling green, yellow, red for my resource health, if those thresholds were actually changed to these numbers. Or if it would be even better if we added another blade here that showed this information or that information. We have the power to do that, take this and make it our own even more than it already is. So I'm going to dive in and actually show you the goods on this because it's much more interesting to see than to talk about. So quickly looking through here, this is the tile for that solution. If you wanted to add it, you're not going to see it in the solutions gallery right now. You'd need to go over to your Azure portal and you can just go to the add new resource and type in the server OS monitoring. Note that's currently in preview. This would pull up that resource. You just go through the, the walkthrough to add that to your workspace. It'll do the deployment and life is good from there. Once that happens, there is one subsequent step as part of the documentation for that solution that it recommends you do. For the services, 
as you may or not may not be aware, with Windows services when they start, stop, etc., all that's saved to the event log. And so that's what we're looking for when we track whether a service is running or not. We look at the event log events to see what's happening. Those event log events for Windows service starting and stopping, by default, they do not uh, have the Windows service name and the state in separate fields. But leveraging the, Win the Log Analytics custom fields component, which is a, a currently still a preview feature that you can enable, we can actually extract that data from those event log records and make them our own field so that we can better filter on them. And I've already configured that in my environment here. There are instructions inside this solutions documentation to do that. It's very straightforward. I can show you that in here as well. But for right now, I'm just going to get into the goods of what we get. So the solution off the bat has a tile that shows us the percentile 95 CPU time across all of our servers. Um, that may or may not be useful information to you. This can be changed if need be inside the solutions configuration. When we click on it and dive in, we're met with a lot of information to quickly view and assess our servers. So right off the bat, we're seeing how many servers are currently talking to Login Linux in the last 24 hours compared with how many servers have not heartbeated in the last five minutes. So that five minute threshold is there because you're rebooting a server, it may take more than a minute, we might miss a few heartbeats, we may not want to be alerted on that just yet. So we've got a five minute threshold built in so that we only see the number when servers are staying down, or at least staying not talking to Log Analytics. Again, if you want to modify that, we can. We also see a quick look at our Windows service state, quick look at server restarts, and we dive into some the fun graphs. CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, top end charts beneath showing which servers are the worst offenders. Note that in my environment right now, a lot of these are green, but we do have yellow here. On any of these blades, we do have the ability to, again, set those thresholds to say when this should be seen as red, yellow, green, so that we can visualize that how we want. So this is continuing over. We're getting a lot more information about what's happening in our environment. Quick look at the health of our servers. This is something that can easily throw up on a dashboard. This does have the ability to auto-refresh, so we can just put this up on the on on a TV screen, we could actually log in with a user that is not an admin, and this upper bar here with edit and clone would disappear, giving us a bit more screen real estate. And we'd be able to quickly see what the health is of those key metrics. Now, because this is log analytics, this isn't just pretty graphs here. We can also click onto these to drill in and view the detailed information about the object we're clicking on. So right here, if we wanted to look at the computers with top CPU utilization. We've got a lovely graph here. We can hover over and look at the quick information. But if we want more detail, we want to work with that. Click on it. That'll pass us into our log search, pulling up the query that's being used behind the scenes to generate that graph and give us a nice big version of it. From there, we would be able to look at the individual servers. We could change that query to fit our needs, do aggregations on that query, do whatever we need from there. Quick example of that. Note that uh, right now, this query is, has the data being aggregated on one hour increments. Let's say that one hour aggregation is actually larger than we want. We want to see something a bit more narrow. We want to see a bit more fidelity in our graph. So let's change this down to 30 minutes. It's as simple as changing that text right there. And now we've got a re-aggregation of that data. And it's very fast too. Um, unlike with Operations Manager, where once that raw data is in the data warehouse, it's got aggregation workflows that run on it, and it has fixed aggregations for hourly and daily, and that's what you have. With OMS, Log Analytics, because all the raw data is behind the scenes, we're able to do on-the-fly aggregations. And because we're leveraging that cloud capabilities, the cloud power behind the scenes, we can drill into that data much faster and get that data out much quicker. Instead of having to run a report and wait for the SCAM servers and hope that we've got enough disk I.O. and everything else to actually have that be fast, Right here, I just changed the, the aggregation on the fly and got results in a few seconds. Same data in a five minute aggregation. Very quickly able to get all the information. So going back to our main dashboard. In the same way, we can click on the lines down here and go into information about the specific server or object being referenced. 
Again, it's just a query behind the scenes. We can tweak that query as needed. Further off the side, we have information about some of the saved queries that this comes with. So I mentioned this comes with a whole slew of saved searches. Uh, if For those of you that are already familiar with our log search from previous videos or from other experience, you know we can come into log search and go into favorites and see all of our saved searches. If we scroll down near the bottom, we can see there's a whole lot of queries saved in here for the state of our Windows Server services, as well as a whole lot of saved queries for Windows Server performance and Windows Server events, giving us quick access to that information. If we want to know how many disks cannot be read, errors in our environment, we don't have to worry about making a new query. This already comes with it. If that's saved, we can do that search. And hopefully, I've got none of those in my environment. Um, most of these are all about errors, so hopefully I don't get results. But we can click through and see if anything comes up. If we do have these errors in our environment, these searches will be able to quickly show us that data. And if we wanted to put this on a dashboard, because these aren't shown by default on our Windows Server OS dashboard, if we wanted to add them, it's as simple as having an admin go into edit and tweaking the configuration of this dashboard. This is using the view designer built into to Log Analytics. Any admin has access to it. And from here, we have a lot of options for configuring what we want to see and how we want to see it. So right now, the tile for this is a percentage graph that is being defined based on this query here. If we wanted to see different information on that tile, all we have to do is modify this right here, and we get to see whatever we need. Same for the views. We can come through and look at all of these and see what the current configuration is. For example, for top CPU utilize, utilized computers, the thresholds that are defined in here, we can see it's if it's greater than 80 over the period of that query, it makes it yellow. Greater than 90 goes to red. We wanted to change that to, say, 10 and 20, because why not? Save that right there go back to our dashboard after saving that, and we'll see that suddenly everything is red and yellow because they are over that level. No complex work needed to change that. It's all built into the view. We can just go in there and make simple modifications to tweak this as needed. If we wanted to, say, add more information, we wanted to have one of those saved search queries be a, a counter in here to see how many of those failed events are happening. We can easily drag a new tile. We might want to say stack of line charts. We just drag it out, go down to my end. Once you drag it in, you can rearrange that wherever you want. And it's as simple as filling out this chart on the side here, defining what we want those graphs to be named, what query we want to be used to present the data, and any other information is needed. So we've got a lot of power to easily, quickly configure this. And again, everything's a query. So if you just navigate through, you build the query you want, you'll like it. You just save that query, pop it in here to a dashboard, build your own view, and life is good. Again, you can also import, export these to quickly move them between workspaces. The uh, original view that I had put together for this, before this solution came out, I can show you that in here as well, because it is also in this environment. With that solution, once this fully loads, there we go. Um, I, I have my tile just quickly showing us the availability, how many servers are currently talking to OMS versus how many are not heart beating. And we can dive in and look at the same data. A lot of the same information on this dashboard, but it's another example of how we can visualize that server monitoring data. Other things we can do with the custom dashboard doesn't have to be all performance data. For example, if you guys are familiar with SCOM audit collection services, um, not a whole lot of people use it because it requires a whole infrastructure on top of SCOM, but the idea behind it has always been aggregating your security logs so that you can quickly report on security data and audit your environment. Now, the Log Analytics security tool is great for doing a lot of that already. It's, it's very thorough and very fantastic. But let's say you're a shop that has got ACS, you love ACS, you really want to make sure to keep a lot of the ACS data around, you want to figure out what the analog is here. And the security solution is great, 
but you just want to have something that's much more familiar for your current staff. Well, here is an ACS dashboard um, that has queries that relate to, that map to those ACS reports to quickly see that information for security purposes. This is also a custom view that we built here in the Login Notes workspace. Again, this can be exported, distributed to you, loaded up in your environment. So long as you're collecting the data, you'll be able to see, visualize this in your environment without any problem. So that's, that's the view designer in a nutshell. So, so far we've talked about, let me hop back to the slideshow here. So far we've talked about collecting data into Log Analytics. We've talked about visualizing that data through Log Analytics queries, throughout Log Analytics custom views. The other key part, the final part for really saying we're monitoring these servers, of course, is notifications, alert management. Everyone's favorite part of monitoring. A lot of you have, I'm sure you've used lots of monitoring tools in the past. Scum, everybody's main complaint with Scum is that it monitors too much, generates a lot of noise, a lot of notifications, and it takes work to tune. It's important, it's useful, but it does take tuning. And I've worked with several other monitoring platforms and they're very much the same. A lot of data being collected, a lot of stuff being alerted on. Why do I bring this up for log analytics? With log analytics, alerting is slightly different. In my mind, majorly improved. Um, so the big problem we have in previous tools is that we get a lot of extra alerts, a lot of notifications, and nothing aggregated. If a network site goes down and we find that 20 servers are no longer talking, that scam's going to send out 20 emails one for each server. And so now you're navigating through your emails, trying to figure out what's the core problem you're trying to address, crossing emails, it's, it's easy to get lost. With Log Analytics, because everything starts with a query, it's gonna automatically aggregate that information together itself. When you build an alert, it's a very straightforward process. We just define a query that pulls up the records we care about. If those, that records for this case is, we wanna know how many servers aren't heart beating, then we define a query that says, in X time period, what servers aren't heart beating? We define a query that says, in X period, what servers have a CPU performance utilization over X metric? And when that alert runs, when that workflow runs and it generates that alert, instead of sending you an alert for every record that it finds, it's gonna send you one email that says, hey, here's the alert rule, here's what it's configured like, here are all the offenders right now. So it's a lot easier to navigate through and to address the issues because instead of having to compare multiple emails and track down the issue, you've got one email that says, okay, here's a list of servers that are offline. You can look at that and go, well, that's all the servers in, in the uh, Kansas City site. I guess we have a network problem. So the process of building this, very straightforward. We start with the query. We build that query. Once we have that query, it's very straightforward to convert that query to an alert rule. There's no need for complex wizards. There's no need for determining, well, do I want this type of monitor? Do I want that type of monitor? What data do I want in here? Uh, do, well, do I want it to have consecutive samples or this or that next thing? And go down some complex wizard with crazy steps. No, everything is the same. And it's a one page form. This image kind of cuts it off, but we'll see it in the demo in a minute. Very straightforward to configure and alert. The main things we configure for it, we drop in that query, then just define what we want the severity of that alert to be, which just changes the formatting of the email. We set a time window, which defines the range that the query should search for to look for records. So if we wanted to, say, search for servers with a CPU utilization of over 95%, but we only care about the last half an hour when this alert rule runs, Set the time window to 30 minutes, and it's only going to look at records from the last 30 minutes. You're not going to be alerted about something that happened two days ago when you care about right now. The frequency, of course, is how frequently that alert rule is run, how frequently that query is run to determine the offenders and to perform an alert action. And the threshold is simply what's the number that this number of records returns has to exceed in order to generate an alert. There are actually two ways to go about configuring alerts these days. There's the number of records 
configuration, number of results configuration, uh, which has been out there for ages. There's also the metric measurement, which is technically still in preview, but there's no difference inside the program. It's actually it's side by side as if it were fully there. Uh, it's only still in preview technically because they may improve things, may change things as time goes on. But the difference between those, with number of results, you're alerting on simply if the number of records returned by the query that you provide is greater than or less than whatever threshold you provide. Simple, very easy to do. If you just want to know if there are uh, any heartbeat, uh, heartbeat failures in the last half an hour, then simply make a query that pulls up heartbeat failure alerts or heartbeat failure records and have the threshold be zero. If there's any more than zero, it'll send an alert. If you only care about if the number of uh, servers is greater than five, we change the threshold to five and go from there. If you want an alert, if say a single server produces more than 10,000 records in a five minute period, then we would use a number of results for that, leave the query to be fairly vague, just number of event records for that server and go. We also have the metric measurement. This is much better to use when you want to do a count of something, when you want to look at performance data as the obvious example, but also if you want to look at data over time. So at a recent SCOM project, I had a question about configuring, uh, configuring consecutive samples monitors. And with SCOM, it's simply consecutive samples. If you want to know when a server has CPU utilization over a threshold for a 30 minute period, it has to be consecutive samples of over that threshold for that time length or it's not going to alert. The customer had a question about whether or not we'd be able to configure an alert to if there were a certain number of spikes over that threshold during that time period, even if they weren't consecutive. With SCUM, there's not really a way to do that. With log analytics, the metric measurement does it out of the box. You can configure this to either do consecutive samples or a uh, number of samples entirely, which is the number of spikes. Define your threshold, define whether it needs to be greater than or less than, and go. Very straightforward, very easy to configure. The final step for configuring an alert is just determining what you want to happen after that alert fires. Because the alert firing, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do anything aside from create an alert record. But we have the ability to configure things. We have three main options right now that have a lot of flexibility to them. So the main one, email notifications. This is what most people want. Sends an email to an email address or multiple email addresses with a custom subject line that you set. It's aggregating that data and saying, here are the results of that alert. It's alert fired. Here are the, the sources that have this problem. So you can look at that and say, OK, 10 of my servers are down. I need to go address this. Or I've got 15 servers that are exceeding 90% CPU utilization right now. What is going on in my environment? You can go address that. But it's one email leak. You don't have to worry about getting 1,000 emails and parsing them all to look at the overall logic. You get one email for alert, and you go. Other things we can do is fire off a webhook. So if you're not familiar with what a webhook is, Basically, a number of applications these days, it's a, it's a modern web service role that basically an application exposes a service that accepts HTTP post data in a certain structured format, which then allows it to pull that data into that system and do things with it. Fancy definition. Um, basically, what this is is a common standard way of passing data from Log Analytics to any external system that supports webhooks. So this could be Slack or PagerDuty or any other application you have, a custom application. So long as it's worth a webhook, we can natively integrate with it by just supplying that webhook data into our alert and saying, when this alert fires, fire this at the webhook. That server, that process, whatever that uh, application is, can then collect that data from Log Analytics, make a Slack notice about it, yell at everybody in channels or whatnot. The other thing we can do is fire off a runbook. So you know, I mentioned earlier, another part of the Operation Management Suite is Azure Automation, which is a process automation tool made up of runbooks that perform actions. There's native integration between our alerts and our runbooks so that when we when the alert fires off, we can select the runbook and say, this one here, fire this off. And that runbook can be literally anything you want. That can be something that passes that data into a third-party system that does not support webhooks, maybe into your ticketing system. That could be something that uh, 
tries to auto-remediate the issue. Maybe it parses the data from that alert, finds out which servers are having the problem, and then goes and tries to auto-remediate it. And it could be anything else you want. If you really wanted, it could be something that shoots out a tweet. I don't know. You do you. Your, your workflow, whatever works for you. So there's a lot of flexibility there with how with what happens from our alerts. Let's take a look at configuring those alerts. You can see exactly how straightforward it is. So I'm here in log search. I'm going to pull up one of my saved searches for an alert that I wrote in advance. Note that it's really easy to search in here. I just type in what I want, and bam, here is my query. So this query that I'm pulling up right now, what this does is it looks at the average CPU utilization uh, for servers being greater than 30% over a five minute aggregation. Um, so this has a threshold built into the query showing that anything less than 30 is being dropped. If you want to see the same thing without dropping that data, I can just come down to the end of this query and drop the where statement off. And there's the average percent CPU utilization for all of my servers across a five minute aggregation. So if I wanted to take this and trigger an alert, anytime that something is over, something happens uh, across the time window, over a 30 percent, percent threshold or a 90 percent threshold, whatever works for your workflow, it's as easy as taking this and clicking the alert button right here. That'll automatically open up the add alert rule window. Note that it'll also automatically pull in that query that you have specified. So you take your time building the query, it'll put it in here, and it'll also show you how many results, how many records are returned, so you can get a, an idea of what's actually been captured by this. So. In, I'm going to name this rule. I'm going to call it CPU utilization percentage greater than 30% over 15 minutes. I can add a description in here as well. The name of the alert, the description of the alert, this is data that's going to be passed into whatever the alert action you perform is. Whether you're sending an email or firing off to a webhook or firing off a runbook, this information is going to be available in there so that it can be used however you want to use it whether it's simply notifying people, hey, here's what this means, here's what you should do about it, or whether it's passing that data off to a runbook to perform actions. And I'm going to set this, the search query to have a 15 minute uh, time window. What that means is when this runs, it's only going to look at data at records in the last 15 minutes. If I were to change this out to 30, we'll see the number of results has, has changed. Change down to five. Again, results has have changed. That just helps us define the scope of what we're reporting off of. The other thing to note is the alert frequency. Now, it's important to consider both your frequency and your time window when generating an alert. Because if you have your frequency and your time window both set to 15 minutes, then this will run once every 15 minutes, and it'll tell you any results that happened in that last time period since it ran, but it's only going to give you one sample. If you want to do consecutive sample sort of thing, we need to make sure our frequency is frequent enough that we're getting multiple data. So since we're doing performance, I'm going to make this a metric measurement. I'm going to set this actually to five minutes so that this is running every five minutes. Look at the last 15 minutes, and we can see that level of data. I'll say metric of measurement, and I want to know any results if they're greater than 90. We can do total breaches, which is, again, those spikes in that time range, or consecutive breaches, meaning that it's persistent across that setting across the time range. Greater than, less than, set our number. I'm going to make up a number here just because. One other cool thing we can do with alerts is there is this suppress alerts option. What that allows you to do, let's say is, a, is an issue happening, You've, you don't want to get the alert get alerted multiple times. Once that alert fires off, you don't want to get another alert about that for some certain period of time. We can configure that right here, saying suppress the alerts. I'm going to say one hour. After this fires off, don't run this alert rule again for the next hour. Then it'll fire off again after that hour. We've given ourselves a little bit of leeway so that we have time to fix that issue before getting slammed with multiple emails at the same issue. 
Finally, we can come in here and say who we're sending this email to. I'm going to send it to my work email and say, oh no, CPU is too darn high. You can add in multiple recipients here, just put a semicolon between them. Send an email to bob at bobsitshop.com, that's probably real. Um, once you do that, I do hit save to save the alert. If you want to do an email and a webhook, or an email and a runbook, or all three, we can configure that. You can also disable as many as you want. You do have to have one action configured, generally. Uh, sometimes it'll let you save it without all actions, but it's recommended to have an action configured, otherwise it's going to make an alert out in log analytics, and you won't actually see it. But if we want to send this to a runbook, we just come in here. It's already going to be linked to an automation account. We just select which runbook we want to actually fire off and say where we want to run it, and it'll pass that data and go. For a webhook, simply put in the URL for what that where that webhook is located, and it will by default have the appropriate structure to send that data. But if you need to structure that data in a certain way for your service, let's say it's a non-standard format, you just click the in include custom JSON payload here and phrase that down here. Um, if that sounds confusing right now, don't worry about it. If, you're, if you have a service that uses a webhook, that service is going to tell you, here is the format you should uh, send your data in to trigger this. You can take that and drop it in here and use it. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about it. But once you plug in your data, you can test the webhook from here, make sure it works, and everything's good. Once you save that, then everything is good. You've got your alert configured, and life is good. It's that easy. There's no complex wizards. If you want to monitor that later, every alert that's created comes up in, it's actually saved as a record in Log Analytics under type alert. I need to capitalize my T. I don't think I have any in my environment right now, but if I did, we would see alerts popping up in here so we can sort between that. We could build a custom view that shows that alert data that breaks it down by severity, any number of things. So, in a nutshell, that's our fundamental server monitoring and log analytics. It comes down to collecting the data, building views or leveraging existing views to visualize that data, and configuring alerts. And it's very straightforward, very easy to do. One thing to note about alerts with log analytics that's different from, say, SCAM, unlike SCAM, where when you put in a new measure pack, there are a lot of workflows configured automatically, there are a lot of alerts configured automatically, it's going to automatically start doing things. With log analytics, it has some, some of the solutions have recommended alerts to enable, but in general, it's not going to add a bunch of alerts and call it a day so that suddenly you get bombarded with emails. You're going to be configuring those for what you need. So it comes down to your organization. You know what you need to monitor. You know when you need to be notified. You know what your monitoring requirements are. You can build your own alerts to match that very simply and just get the information you need without being bombarded by information that may or may not be relevant to you without coming in and searching for it. So we're getting to the end. It's a good time for Q&A. If there's any questions, feel free to chat now. I might repeat the question of the microphone, but. So I didn't see anything about the body of email alerts. What actually gets sent? Gotcha. So the question is about the body of the email alerts, what actually gets sent. So the body is actually structured based on the data that is being returned from that query. So uh, I don't have an example right now because I did not generate one. I meant to. Um, but what happens is it starts off showing the name of the alert, description of the alert, and what the severity is. The table is showing the key records that were returned by the alert. And then there's a little bit of da uh, additional data beneath that. Um, and then it's just... This has been sent from log analytics, et cetera. So it's pretty straightforward. It basically has just the data you plugged in there and the records. But it's formatted in a table, so it's easy to read. Another? Yes. Is there a way to notify people based on like, like, or SLA? 
So the question is, is there a way to notify people based on escalation or SLA inside the email alerts? So on a single alert, no, but that may be a situation where you look at what the condition is for that SLA and make a separate alert off of a slightly modified query. So for example, if, if uh, a server being CPU over 90% for 10 minutes needs to, no need to notify tier one, and then if it's still at 90% across 30 minutes to notify, to notify tier two, we just build a second alert that has that separate condition in the query and fire that the appropriate people. That way, if the second query is not met, no alert is sent, but if the second query is met, then if it's still a problem at that time, then the alert will still get sent. Any other questions? All right, well, I hope this has been useful. Uh, just to summarize, we went over, talked about defining what is our fundamental server monitoring, talked about enabling data collection in log analytics, how to work with that in log analytics, and how to configure alerts on it. So this is going to be put up online, uh, probably this one, probably going to be next week as session three goes up tomorrow. If you're bored, want to learn more, anything else, head to our YouTube channel. It's just go to YouTube and look for model technology solutions. You'll find it. We've got a, a I just lost the term for it, the collection of videos in there, uh, playlist, thank you, um, that uh, has all of our OMS videos in there. So otherwise, if you have any other questions later, feel free to shoot us an email, reach out. Um, another thing to note for anybody in the room, uh, we are putting together an OMS workshop uh, so that we can help you guys, if you're interested in OMS, quickly deploy it, do a uh, proof of concept, test it in your environment, and go from there. So if you're interested in anything like that, feel free to reach out to Stephanie there, and we'd be glad to help. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>